Good evening, everyone. This is Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. I hope all of you are doing absolutely fantastic. Today, we are going to be talking about the updated news for Android 11, and we're going to go pretty deep into the newly released developers talk that came out for Global. A lot of you might have missed this conversation, and it's about a 50 minute long conversation that does have to be using the YouTube auto translate. But it's a really great one, and I can't wait to share some of the information that I kind of found in it. So first off, probably the news that everybody was expecting or not expecting. Uh, we did receive an update from the January 28th update regarding Android 11, and it was specifically given that we are expecting the Android 11 issues to be resolved at the end or late end of April. Now I know this can be kind of a bummer and I have spoken out multiple times about this, but this is not the video to get upset or angry in. This is really just a quick update for you guys. I'm sure we'll be talking more about this in the near future. Personally, I'm glad that they are actively communicating with us about this. Now let's get into what I really wanna talk about, which is the developer uh, kind of conversation that happened. Now the developer conversation was released with the uh, kind of XVS Universe webpage, and it was hidden away in a tab that you actually had to click to. And it does have YouTube subtitles on it. And I watched the full thing on Monday, and I watched part of it again yesterday and today. Well, I guess I'm, I'm saying Monday like it's a separate day, but Monday morning for me was like Sunday for me, if that makes sense. Uh, but it had a lot of really great information. And I think the vibe around the developer conversation was super chill and I actually really enjoyed getting to sit down and watch uh, Hirono, Hiroki, and uh, Fujitetsu as well. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, some of you might not even know who these people are. Uh, most of us in the global community are familiar with uh, Hiroki, but uh, he's bright and center. He always wears his uh, tie-dye rainbow shirts. Uh, we also have Hirono over here on the left side. A lot of you are probably familiar with Hirono. Uh, a lot of you have probably seen him with his uh, bow tie <laughs> that he always has on there. Or the, I believe it's a drawn on bow tie. I'm not 100% sure. But he's kind of a, uh, I would say, I, it feels like he's a jokester to me. But he's also a very deep thinker. And it's, you know, whenever he talks, you definitely want to listen. And then we also have Fujitetsu over here on the right side. And this is one of the first times Fujitetsu has actually been on a broadcast. He was at the uh, Brave XVS convention that they talked about a little bit, but he is one of the primary story writers for the game, is my understanding. And he kind of dives into some of the specific plot points of the XVS universe, and specifically where this XVS universe event is coming from. Now, the developer's talk had multiple sections. One section was specifically talking about the universe event, Another uh, section was talking about the War of Visions one year anniversary official stream coming up here on the 20th at uh, 6 p.m. This is not to be confused with our unofficial community live stream, which we are having on the 26th later that week. But yeah, there was a lot of information and it was really cool. Just seeing these three men interact uh, really put them in a perspective that I think a lot of people uh, don't recognize. And I feel like you could really feel their passion in the conversation that they were having with each other and how much they actually love uh, the War of the Visions, Brave Exvius uh, community and world. Uh, Fujitetsu, uh, to kind of kick us off here, spent a lot of time kind of setting the backdrop of War of the Visions and Brave Exvius for anyone who might be new players or new to either world. And then it got into a bit of a larger discussion on the Far Plane. Now, the Far Plane is something for anyone who's played Brave Exvius, potentially even War of the Visions, that you should be familiar with. One of the things that I didn't realize is that the War of the Visions Far Plane, right, we go to the Far Plane, right? Like we quick click on Far Plane whenever we go to do Gill Snappers and stuff, but it's hard for us to recognize that, I think, as a Far Plane compared to Brave Exvius, because Brave Exvius, it was really clear that you were going into the Far Plane, right? And, you know, in Brave Exvius, it's also really clear that King Mog's castle is in the Far Plane. It's actually a place you go and you can move your character around in. Whereas 
War of the Visions actually has an equivalent to King Mog's Tower in the Far Plane, which I didn't even put together at all. Um, I didn't realize the Porcelain Tower was actually considered to be a physical place in the Far Plane, which is the same Far Plane as Brave Exvius. So I think this is really interesting from a lore perspective and is something I personally didn't realize. And I actually kind of really like that Fujitetsu is on here kind of talking about this because I would have had no idea. Like, I would have been like, what? Like, no. And maybe it's just because I don't read into the lore of things super crazy um, or that I'm like pretty casual about that time of stuff. But I mean, if it's not like, like, how do I say it? Like, if it's not like thrown in my face in the story, odds are I'm not the type of guy that's going to pick up on that type of stuff. So having Fujitetsu up here explaining it to me was super nice and helpful. One of the other things that uh, Fujitetsu talked about is ups the upset in the balance of the far plane. And this is something that is also very cool because it reflects on the Brave Exvia storyline and reveals kind of a new element that we haven't seen in War of the Visions yet which is the idea of a will of light. And I really think this is something that has manifested itself since Final Fantasy XIV came out. Of course, crystals have had different wills as we played through all of the Final Fantasies. I have played through all of them. A lot of the times the crystals are talking, right? Talking to us or sending us a message, but it's only until recently that we've started seeing the crystal as a manifestation of something, right? Um, or having like a will of its own where it's actively impacting the world in the way that it does. And so they talk about the Will of Light, which is a character that was introduced in Brave XV Season 3, which I've only played through Brave XV Season 2. So good on Fujitetsu for telling me that it was introduced in Brave XV Season 3. And he talks about how the Will of Light has the capability to kind of address this balance issue in the Far Plane, which is what's going to lead us to the XV Universe event coming up here in the next couple of days or later on tonight specifically. After that, they did transition into some other conversation and they eventually got to the War of the Visions one year anniversary stream. Again, I'm not gonna cover everything that they did in this video because it was a 50 minute long video and there came a point where it was like they were just fans talking and it was super, like, they could have edited this video to be like 20 minutes if they wanted to, but they left in the casual conversation between Hiroki, Hirono, and Fujitetsu, and it just made it really wholesome almost. Like, it really highlighted their character as developers and producers. So, yeah, I really think you guys should go watch it because it's really, like, it'll give you a good feeling um, about the whole thing. Now, um, in this specific image here, um, they're talking about the anniversary stream, and they're talking about plans that they have for the anniversary stream. Uh, there's going to be some type of way for viewers to be able to join in on the anniversary stream as well. We're not sure what that's going to be yet. Uh, specifically, they said some of the XVS Universe milestones will be decided in a special segment. And when they got to this part, they did talk about some type of mini game. So we don't know what is going to be happening on the live stream. We do know there's going to be some type of a mini game that's going to kind of decide this. And probably what I think is the most important thing here is that there's going to be some type of out of game news. They kind of left it at that. I don't know what this is. I don't know if maybe we're getting a change in producers. I don't know if maybe this is the announcement of a PC game client for War of the Visions. I don't know what this news could be, but I'm kind of curious about this because I think anytime we're talking about the Final Fantasy franchise, the War of the Visions game, getting specifically out of game news is really curious to me. And they really were specific in mentioning this. So I'm wondering what this out of game news is actually going to be. I'm wondering if maybe they're going to announce a new XVS mobile game. Maybe there's going to be some other type of announcement, like a Final Fantasy 16 announcement. Who knows? Maybe we're going to get news about Near Reincarnation, because Near Reincarnation has not really had any news come out, except for that newsletter that we got in February saying that it was delayed, or January or something. So I'm really curious what the out-of-game news is going to be. 
later on after the war of the vision segment they did kind of like <laughs> they kind of just rattled on and i mean that in the most loving way uh they <laughs> they basically just talked about their goals for war of the visions and the xvs universe franchise and then they just kind of talked about you know how they've grown as producers how they've worked together and it it's just really cool uh one of the things that i really pulled out of this conversation is that they are planning for the xvs universe franchise to go for 10 years that's really their goal they really want to uh solidify uh the xvs universe as a franchise in final fantasy right or a type of brand inside of final fantasy right we don't have very many different brands of final fantasy we do have like chocobo mystery dungeon but if you think about all the spin-offs right of final fantasy if you think about you know either the success or failure of dffoo the success or failure of mobius you can also look at probably the only successful spin-off brand from final fantasy is probably the Ivalice brand, right? That's the only other real significant brand of Final Fantasy that we've seen kind of filtered throughout the ages. So I'm really curious um, about their plans for the XVS universe. I'm really curious to see how this event goes, and I'm curious kind of what this means for the XVS universe and the XVS world, and kind of the interactions between the brave XVS world and the War of, War of the Visions world. Because honestly, I love the fact that these worlds might be interacting with each other more directly like they are with the story that's going to be launching with XVS Universe. Anyway, I could talk more about this, but honestly, if you want to know more, I really think you should just go watch the video that they released because it's so wholesome, wonderful, and it really, I think, exposes a character of the producers that many global players don't get to see because we don't you know, have the interaction with the producers in the same way that the JP player base does. And there is also an element of a language barrier, right? Uh, for, you know, Hiroki, he of course speaks English and he speaks Japanese. Japanese is of course his first language. And even through subtitles and translation, I really feel like I get more from Hiroki for who he is as a person and what he does as a producer from this translated video than I do from some of the global videos that he releases. So make sure you check it out. Make sure you uh, give it a like and make sure you check the description down below for the information. As always, if you guys do want to support me, make sure you use my affiliate link, dig.gs slash coins. You can go to dig.gs slash offer as well, or drop a like or subscribe. And hopefully I'll see some of you guys on stream tonight. We will be doing our classic reset stream tonight. And I can't wait to check out the Brave XVS Universe event. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good one.